Okay, now let's move to step number three, which is normal in the normal incident interpretation, which is conduction. Okay, now the first interval, the conduction that we should see is the PR interval. Because the PR interval, okay, which is measured from the beginning of the P, the beginning of the QRS, shows the conduction movement from the SA node to the AV node. Okay, so the normal PR interval should be between three small box, three to five small boxes. Okay, and if it's prolonged more than five small boxes, then we could be looking at a conduction problem in the AV node. So this is what we call as an AV block, either a type 1 or type 2 AV block. Sometimes this PR interval may be short, shorter than three small boxes. And this could be due to a uh, pre-excitation syndrome. Okay. Or sometimes it may be due to conditions such as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, where uh, the conduction goes to, uh, bypasses the AV node and goes through the accessory pathway and activates the ventricle. All right. Okay. Okay. Next, let's look at the QRS duration. Okay. The QRS duration shows the movement of conduction from the AV node. Okay. To the bundle of his to the Purkinje fibers, okay, and to the ventricles. So this QRS shows the depolarization in the ventricle after the AV node. Okay, so you have QRS, and the normal duration of the QRS should be less than three small boxes, less than 0 0.12 seconds. If it's prolonged more than three small boxes, then you have to think about the causes of a broad QRS complex. Broad QRS complex may be due to uh, bundle branch blocks, sometimes even maybe changes due to hyperkalemia, or sometimes it may be due to uh, arrhythmias, life-threatening arrhythmias such as ventricular tachycardia. Sometimes the QRS complex may be very narrow, less than one small box, which can happen in conditions such as supraventricular tachycardia. Okay, so next, let's look into the QT interval. Okay, so the QT interval is measured from the beginning of the Q until the end of the T wave. Okay, A Q, the QT interval measures the ventricular depolarization followed by ventricular repolarization depolarization followed by repolarization so any problem with the qt shows that it could be a problem in the ventricle okay all right so qt should be calculated should be should not be more than 11 boxes 11 small boxes a normal qt should be around 11 small boxes which is 0 0.44 seconds but sometimes the qt may be inaccurate due to the um the heart rate because sometimes if the heart rate is uh, if the patient is tachycardic, the Q interval could be shortened. If the patient is bradycardic, the Q interval could be prolonged, but it could be normal. So that is why in this case, we need to calculate the corrected QT, QTC, which is the corrected QT using the Bezet's formula. All right. It's very simple. First and foremost, you need to calculate the QT in seconds. All right. So here you calculate the QT from here to here. Okay. So roughly it is uh, roughly around five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Nine small boxes okay so nine small boxes is nine times um, 0 0.04 which is 0 0.36 all right so 0 0.36 next you calculate the time from the one r interval to the next r interval so as we can see it the one r interval to the next r interval is one two three four so it is four big boxes so four big boxes times by 0 0.2 is 0 0.8 so you take 0 0.36 divide by the root of 0 0.8 okay so the calculation is calculated as qtc is equivalent to qt in seconds divided by the rr in seconds which is to the root of to the root of two sorry uh, the root of uh, the rr interval in seconds okay so once you've calculated that that will be the corrected qt but that's it again sometimes you have problems you want to eyeball and see immediately whether the qt is prolonged or not very simple 
all you need to do is look at the QT interval and look at the RR interval. Okay, eyeballing will tell you that if the QT interval is prolonged, it is prolonged if it's more than uh, half the duration of the RR interval. Okay, for example, if you see this RR interval, it is four uh, big boxes. So if the QT interval is more than two boxes, more than half of the RR interval, then you know that this QT uh, is most likely prolonged and you don't really need to use the BZ formula. All right. So as you can see over here, this is roughly around almost two box. Uh, uh, this is all, almost around, okay, uh, five plus four, nine small boxes, okay, almost two boxes. And as you can see, the RR interval Half of it is roughly around two boxes, so it is less than these two boxes, big boxes. So then you know that this is this QT is normal. If this QT is more than two big boxes here, which is more than half of the RR interval, then you know that this QT is definitely prolonged. Okay, what does it mean QT, or if it's prolonged or if it's shortened? All right, a prolonged QT, which is more than half of the RR interval can mean that the patient could be having electrolyte problems such as hypokalemia, okay, hypomagnesemia, or hypocalcemia, okay, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypokalemia, all the hypo problems, all right. Sometimes the QT may be shortened, all right, and this could be due to a shortened QT syndrome, or sometimes it can be caused by drugs.